There's so many great stories involved with this house, not just because it's our first <coughs> attempt at a passive house, um, but because it was a repeat client who's the head of the Global Ecology Center and a Nobel Prize winner, um, because we didn't just design a new house, we designed a new house by recycling an old house. And it was a, a house that was never meant to be a full-time house. It was a summer cabin um, in a group of summer cabins and it was the only one left. Okay, so what is a passive house? Briefly, um, and I totally cribbed this from the Passive House US site, but it was the best way to summarize it. Uh, the, the seven main points is to super insulate um, eliminate thermal bridging as a way of keeping controlling heat and cooling traveling through the walls um, making the building uh, envelope as airtight as possible air sealing um, using energy and heat recovery ventilation as opposed to for example traditional forced air system uh, high performance windows and doors um, taking advantage of passive uh, solar strategies and then the Passive House um, Institute, uh, in order for it to be certified as a Passive House, it has to uh, comply with their uh, energy model. Briefly, for those of you who don't know, it's, a, it's a, um, uh, a building strategy that came out of Europe, uh, Germany, I think, and it's very been popular in Europe for decades in um, mostly residential, but also some non-residential buildings. If it's done right, the, in the middle of the winter you can heat your house essentially with uh, just turning your hair dryer on or having a dinner party just getting a bunch of bodies in the room that the, the heat from half a dozen people or a, a couple of appliances is enough to keep you comfortable so this is what we started with it was an old <laughs> cabin in the woods the first time Scott and I saw it, it it looked like a little old lady and maybe lived in it for 50 years and there was with no kids or no dogs I mean the inside of it was in fantastic shape and it had these beautiful um, almost barn-like uh, great room and a couple of sleeping porches that had been converted into um, rooms over the years and then one bedroom and a tiny little galley kitchen um, so the, the the material in here and the the character of it was definitely worth saving so the um, living room or the great room as we called it and the master bedroom we, as a team, we decided to save that and design a new house uh, around it. No shear, no insulation. It really was built like a barn or a, um, a little cabin. So the uh, interior boards were basically, uh, the interior finish kind of was substituting for um, sheathing on the house. Um, so there's an existing uh, plan when they bought the house. Um, the big great room. These were originally sleeping porches and then they got turned into rooms at some point with um, real windows and closets. Um, and then one bedroom back here and a little kitchen and uh, a little bathroom and you know a furnace. There was no place to put it so the, like the furnace was in the hallway. Um, pretty small, very simple. So um, we save this big box, the great room and the old sleeping porches and we saved the master bedroom and we essentially designed a um, house around it. They have two grown kids so they're empty nesters but they've got bedrooms for when they graduate and there's no jobs for them. They, can, they get to come back here and a big kitchen and um, you'll see later it was a little challenging because of all the trees around the property to take advantage of uh, natural light but we did our best. Um, saved everything all the all the framing lumber all the finished lumber it was all redwood it was all tight tight grain old growth the boards themselves were uh, <coughs> 10 inch boards um, which are really hard to find as as you know these days so we stockpiled everything um, dismantled the parts of the house we weren't keeping and then so what you're seeing in that photo is the back side of the interior finish because the studs are on the inside they're all exposed and um, then we uh, jacked it up on s steel skids and moved it out of the way. Then put in a real foundation, a big matte foundation, uh, given how close they are to the San Andreas. 
Um, then we moved them back again on top of the foundation and then filled in the rest of the new house sort of in between it with the, um, the floor framing and all the wall framing. So to insulate these old boxes, we, we, we essentially built a new roof over them and at least on the great room it was a big enough stand, uh, span that we had a piece of steel that was um, providing a new ridge beam. And this project had a ton of rain delays. Uh, unfortunately, it started late enough in the year, and as we all know, we had a very wet winter, so it really got held up. Uh, all said and done, probably lost two to three months of schedule because of rain on this project, just where it was at when all the rain started. So when it finally dried out um, and the sheathing could go on, um, this is something that probably would have made a difference if you were in Scandinavia. I don't think it was really necessary for this project, but it's a good shot of kind of the, the true belt and suspenders approach um, uh, uh, for one of the air sealing techniques at, where they put down the, you know, the sealant bead uh, on the exterior face of the framing before the um, sheathing went on. And th th that's one thing to do. The, the more important thing to do is the, um, the taping and the sealing of all, any possible avenue that air can leak out or leak in um, to the building. So that included, you know, all the seams and the, and the sheathing, any penetration, you know, you want to um, keep penetrations down to a minimum um, because you're just going to have to seal it up again. <coughs> so how are we doing? Well, it's not done yet, so remember these here, those are the seven uh, kind of uh, commandments you want to uh, design a passive house around or, or more importantly build it around. So the super insulating, um, in the crawl space we used uh, isonine and we even oversprayed below the um, bottoms of the framing a bit to get more in there and I think we netted out about R36 in the crawl space. Um, I don't, didn't have any, unfortunately didn't have any good photos of the um, the walls or the roofs with the insulation, but we used a blown in cellulose and uh, the walls are uh, R26, I believe, is what we ended up with. Um, and then the roof, we had um, uh, let's see about 15 inches to work with. So in theory, that should be about an R50. Uh, roof. That, the, the walls and the roof were blown in cellulose and again the crawl space was uh, spray foam, an isonine product. A um, little bit about thermal bridges and framing. They uh, kind of missed the boat on what we wanted to do with the framing and they framed it in a conventional manner and which I'll call dumb framing. And then the smart framing which um, it actually it, and it, because of it we got photos that demonstrate the difference between the two. So Scott went out there and, and gave them the, uh, the two hour lesson in smart framing after they had framed up at least this part of the house and so they, we figured out all the framing that could come out and there's a pile of it and I'm not even sure if that's the, um, the, the total pile after they're doing but basically there's a lot of redundant framing uh, that ends up in a traditionally framed house and with uh, some extra um, strength in hangers and fasteners in, in certain um, intersections and connections you can do with a lot less uh, framing lumber than you would normally see in a house. So you're not only saving um, material but you're also every stud in that wall is a potential thermal bridge. Um, there's the taping, all the penetrations. You try to keep them to a minimum and then where you have them you've got to seal them really tight whether it's on the wall or on the roof uh, and then they once it's all taped up we did the blower test and you're going to have Scott check that too but basically you seal the whole house up and um, you test it for leaks and there are various tricks to find out where the leaks are and then go around and um, identify where those leaks are and plug them up before you start any of the exterior um, finishes on there. Um, did pretty well. Well, it's the uh, passive value standard is 0.6 air changes per hour. Or, yeah. Yeah. At a, at a, when it's pressurized, which is about 10 times tighter than a typical new house. So it's super tight. And we worked really hard to get to meet that standard. 
It hasn't done its final test yet. Yeah, this was the, the dry run, so to speak. You want to do it before you start um, the exterior finishes, because then it just gets exponentially. It's a lot harder to plug the leaks on the outside than the inside. A um, little bit about the heat recovery uh, system. The unit we're using is from Germany, and it's, it's everybody calls it the magic box. And it's basically is a fan inside there that moves the air, and the heat will still come from a heat pump unit. And so you can see these little um, plastic ducts uh, that also came uh, with the uh, HRV system. It all comes from Germany, and uh, it's I'm told it's really easy stuff to work with. You can cut it practically with a steak knife and they come with these fasteners so it's it's very easy to install. Um, we used serious windows, triple glaze uh, windows on this project. Um, where there was some trepidation about how they would look um, aesthetically and they actually look great. Um, uh, again the client did the solar eye um, calculation and photo here and as you can see this is a lot with a lot of big redwood trees around it. So even in the summer solstice, which is coming up, um, we're probably only getting sun on that roof for about half the day, maybe even less than half the day. Um, and that's even on parts of the house. So opportunities for a PV array, which they've expressed a desire to do in the future, um, will be challenging, I think, uh, what part of the property uh, it, to fit that. Um, here's a, um, the new kitchen with a lot of south and uh, west facing glass be a very nice sunny room so we're definitely taking advantage of passive uh, solar strategy in there. The old redwood room with a new um, skylight in the dark corner to hopefully bring some balanced light in there. Um, and then briefly the um, grammar one which some of you know I think uh, did the modeling for us or for the clients. Um, and I just chose the, the kind of baseline sheet from his PowerPoint that shows some of the um, benchmarks we're shooting for. And there's that air leakage um, maximum, what Scott mentioned, and that, that's kind of the, one of the more important parts of this whole thing of, of complying. They are cl almost closed in. The exterior doors come next week. And then I don't know if they're going to do their final blower test at that point or wait till longer, but the house has a ways to go. They're, before they're finished, but um, just wanted to show this. So there's the uh, the great room with the fireplace, and then after it was taken out, uh, now yeah. now that it's the kitchen beyond there, but it'll have a door, so you'll see through to the back. Um, that's what it looked like before we started when it was stripped, and the framing starting, and they've got the porch on and the roofing, and now the siding is starting on, they've started from the back. So that's it.